All right. Well, hey, welcome back. I'm Blaze. This is the part two to uh, my playlist on Gillespie's algorithm. Um, in this, I hope to supplement my previous video pretty well. Um, maybe go into a little bit more depth about this original uh, example. But my first video was tending t uh, a little bit longer because I spent a lot more time, a lot more time explaining uh, the steps of the algorithm and um, things like that, and so. It, got towards about 16 to 18 minutes, I don't remember exactly, um, and so I kind of breezed through um, this portion, the example portion of it, and then I'll, I'll go in and actually show um, a more complicated oscillation. So this first example we looked at with Gillespie's algorithm, um, again link in uh, to my previous video to review the algorithm I wrote, um, or that is written, and uh, um, and the intro to this first equation, this unimolecular equation. And so basically what we did was we had 50 counts of A um, initial, initially with zero counts of B initially, um, but as we saw throughout the equation in the simulation, we saw a decrease of A down from 50 to zero because uh, time cut out, it didn't reach our 10, our, our T length of 10, so A must have hit zero about six and a half maybe. Um, but anyway, these A's disappeared, these B's appeared, and um, what this does, this MP array, it shows what happens in this equation. And so this, this um, I defined it up here as the stoichiometry matrix. What a stoichiometry matrix essentially is, is it'll reflect the change in, in molecular or, or in molecules when a reaction occurs. Meaning, for A, we lost an A. Every time we run this reaction, we lose one A. 50 goes to 49, 50 goes to 40, or 49 goes to 48, etc., etc. And B gains um, one. That's why we have positive one here. Now, so that's our stoichiometry matrix. That's pretty important to understand, especially when we get into more uh, biomolecular and, and uh, higher order um, equations. Uh, but what we saw is a very jaggedy um, uh, graph. And so if we increase these counts to say f uh, 50,000, we would see a very smooth graph. And this would be much more reflective of an ODE graph that we might be able to run. And that's just because original differential or sorry, ordinary differential equations tend towards infinity, right? And so um, their steps are infinitesimally small. So if we increase our counts, we'll, we will see a lot more reactions. A lot more reactions need to take place, and it looks like we got to almost time. We got to almost time nine here, and so it increased our 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 time, our number of loops that we did quite significantly. Anyway, so that's that. <clears throat> if we jump into example two, an uh, example two here, I define three different equations uh, using three different X, Y, and Z reactants and products, um, and they're all with the same rate C. Um, I guess I I just I called it K in my first video, but then I then I had it as a C in my code, and so I guess I'll just stick with C. Um, so the first one X and Y combined to be Y and Y. Second one Y and Z combined to be Z and Z. And third one, z and x combined to be x and x. And so we can write out this numpy array for the change in x for the three reactions. That is, there's one less x in the first reaction, there's no x in the second reaction, and there's a gain of x in the third reaction, i.e. negative 1, 0, and 1. And similarly for y and z, um, of course, with differing numbers. The other thing that's worth noting is this definition. So what this does is this converts our rate vector with the rate constants of the reactions above associated with the initial conditions of the reactants. So I have our initial conditions for x, y, z, and they multiply together. They multiply to c, which is our rate constant, and that will give us the input that we can use in our Gillespie function defined above. So moving on to our initial conditions or initial state function, this 
these correspond with x, y, z, the number of molecules or, or the, that are associated with the propensities. So the higher propensities, the more your graph, graph will look like an original or an ODE, <laughs> an ordinary differential equation. Right, those count towards infinity. C is our rate, Vy for all three. Vy, uh, we define as the lambda y of this function uh, given y and c. Our time length uh, will not run past one. Uh, it oscillates, so you don't really need to see, and it's it oscillates a lot within the one, so it's pretty redundant if you extended that further. Then you can run everything together. Uh, I save my x counts, my y counts, my z counts from the uh, resulting array that is outputted by the Gillespie function. And you can plot it, and you see that it does oscillate, and you can see the jaggediness, and so on and so forth. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped your, your understanding with the stoichiometry uh, simulations regarding the Gillespie algorithm. Uh, we'll see if I do another one. Maybe I'll do one with the changing rates, although at some point it might just get redundant. Anyway, thanks for watching.